Hey, this is David with Boating Up Films. Today, we're going to replace the water pump and thermostat on a 2001 Jeep Cherokee Limited. Uh, it's got the four liter six cylinder in this one. Uh, first thing we're gonna do is come in and uh, loosen these bolts there while we've got tension on the belt so we can get those loose. Um, and then we're gonna probably remove both fans just to make it for easier access. I've seen people do it uh, just the way it is and get it out. But for me, I don't have the ratchet tools and I may pull this fan too, um, just to get access, because we're going to come in and take, uh, got two bolts here, and then even on the bottom side of the power string pump, two more bolts, and then two bolts that connect to the water pump on this bracket. We'll have to get this bracket backed away a little bit so we can pull the water pump. And we'll go from there. All right, so uh, we just took uh, this hose off, upper uh, return, or that's out, probably, yeah. Let's return to the radiator, and both heater hoses, just to get them out of the way, move them back. These are soft, they really do need to be replaced, but we'll get there. Uh, so now we'll take the tension off the belt and remove the belt, but we're going to record with a flashlight uh, and the phone, you know, the routing of the belt. I don't see a diagram under the hood, so you definitely want to make sure you remember how it goes back. There's that bolts.
We've got buckets down there. Uh, try and catch everything as best we can. A bucket and towel. I'd like to reuse this fluid, but I don't know that I'm going to be able to because it's just getting dirty as it goes on the block. <clears throat> you want to change your thermostat for the most part. Anytime you do a water pump, the thermostat was fine in it. And some of the thermostats that I've got in AutoZone have only lasted like 300 miles. So it uh, may or may not be a good thing to replace it, but we're going to do what's right anyway. And we're going to replace the thermostat <coughs> with a new one, probably a fail safe or something. And it just pops right out. A little more water out, but gasket will stuck to it. Just remember how it goes in. The spring goes in the block. I think we're catching most of that, so that's good. And also, that gives us a little more room opened up to access our uh, bolts for the water pump. Yeah, we're doing good. We're catching most of our water. These are always going to be messy. Right, we've only been out here really about uh, 30 minutes and we've managed to get uh, well underway. On these fans, there's uh, two 9mm screws in the top of each shroud. Uh, this one was cracked and it, it came apart on me, but you wouldn't be able to get that out normally unless you take uh, those uh, bolts off there that hold the fan on itself. Still may take it off just so I have a clear shot, easier shot of getting that on. I probably will. Uh, the tensioner here, I will tell you, uh, this bolt, if uh, you loosen it, will loosen the tension on this, but you have to break the center nut to get the idler to come loose. And then once you do that, it will slide back out of the way. The tension of the belt will pull it back itself. Pretty simple system. Um, so we started out, we loosened uh, these four bolts on the uh, pulley. And you see how loose that is, my problem there. It's making a terrible noise inside the water pump. Luckily, we didn't get it stuck somewhere and it didn't overheat. But the belt didn't have enough tension on it really to hold the thing while I was doing it. So I uh, put a wrench on the one uh, in front of it, loosened this one with a socket, spun it, and just repeated wrench on this one and loosened this one with a socket until I got to the last one. I had to lightly grab this. And you want to be careful, you can use a towel as well. But I just used uh, channel locks and just gently gripped the pulley and along with the tension that was already there on the belt I was able to break the last one uh, so they are all loose um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take this fan out break these off so that I have even more access so and we pulled our water hoses uh, we've got factory clamps that I don't like this one down in there is gonna be hard to get to uh, with the channel locks to get that one off I'm gonna go back with the screw top clamps but We'll go ahead and take the fan off next. We took the thermostat off. It only had two bolts and uh, it had a sensor and uh, it had two hoses. It had the big hose and it had the heater hose and the sensor and then two bolts in it and it'll pop right off. You have to just kind of pry them off gently with a screwdriver. But we'll get the fan off. Uh, that's four bolts on it and uh, we'll break it loose from there. And you can see on your fan here, uh, this is the top side of the fan. You just got two nine millimeters that hold it in and then it's got a slide on the bottom where it slides in. And of course you have to unplug it. Um, this one, the clip was broken on it so it was easy to get off, just a screwdriver. It's got a uh, uh, pulley fan and also has an electric fan. So in here, I'm gonna have to glue this back together. This was already cracked. So uh, we'll glue it back together if we can. If not, we'll get by without the lower half of it. We still got the mount on this side, but we're going to work something out and put it back together. It shouldn't have done that, uh, but it was already cracked, maybe from the last time this has been done. And on these, you can take a screwdriver and just pry it between, see, like the nut and the bolt right there, and you can hold it and actually even turn it that way if uh, your belt's too slick to hold tension. That's what we're doing. We're turning it back up here so we can get. All our bolts should be finger tight. Uh, now we broke them all, but you can hold it with a screwdriver while you break it with a half inch wrench. Alright, we just uh, 
turn this boat until we had enough to slide the belt off the back side of the water pump. Uh, recorded again with my phone to make sure I know how it goes back and pulled it out, got it out of the way and backed out all these little bolts here just that were finger tied that I had broken earlier while the belt was still on and trying to keep all my stuff organized right here in that magnetic thing. But you can see just by taking the fans out it wasn't that hard. You know an extra 10 minutes to gain myself uh, enough room in here to access it. Uh, to me that's important. Uh, it's more comfortable to work that way and it's less frustration in the long run. Now uh, these four bolts on this bracket for the uh, power steering pump we can access through these holes now uh, with a socket with plenty of room so we don't have to bang our knuckles as much. Uh, and these two bolts here are attached to the bracket as well. They'll have to come loose. Uh, they don't hold the water pump in but uh, it's just hinged on the water pump and it's in front of the water pump so we're going to have to get it out of the way so we can have a clear face to set our water pump on. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to loosen these four and loosen these two. I can get to the clamp that is blocked by this whole bracket. This whole thing is going to have to come off on this one. Uh, somebody's been into it before and they actually put the screw clamp on there where you could access the screw. This wouldn't have to happen. You would just have to loosen these. This wouldn't have to come off. Loosen enough where you can get it back. But I'm going to have to take the whole thing off. So Another reason I'm going to have to take uh, this bracket off is because down there on that water hose, I don't know if you can see that, it's got the old style clamps, uh, the factory style clamps where they have to be uh, pulled tightly with a pair of vice grips or something and uh, I can't access those. You see them right there. Um, I can't get a pair of channel locks in there. This is factory hoses and so evidently they put the hoses on before they put this bracket on. Once I get the new uh, hose clamps on, um, I'll turn them around to the front where you can actually access them, but this bracket uh, is going to have to come loose, so we're going to do that now. steering pump sitting to the side it's got flexible enough hoses where we can just set it to the side but I had to take the whole bracket off to get to that clamp because of the way it was turned they put this hose on before they put this bracket on these are evidently our original hoses and we're going to replace these but that's what I had to do just to get to Alright, we uh, easy enough slid our clamp back and I didn't drain the radiator because I didn't see a drain but I was able to just put the bucket under there and then tilt the hose up. I can keep most of it in the radiator which is nice 
uh, just by moving the hose up. Uh, and uh, most of that that's in the bucket uh, came out of the block and just what was in the hoses. So we're, uh, we may reuse what's in the bucket if it's not too contaminated, uh, but we'll probably just uh, get another gallon of antifreeze and uh, mix it with uh, good fresh antifreeze. But uh, we've got about an hour to get down to this far, even with removing the fans and all the brackets. It's not that hard. It looks a little intimidating because it's so tight, but you can open it up in here pretty easy. Uh, and you can see those where the bottom of the fans just slide in there. There are no boats under there. I never had to get under the vehicle to do any of this. Uh, could do it all from the top. But now we've got clear access to our water pump and we can just set it straight on without having to slide or pinch a gasket. Uh, this is a lot better if you want to guarantee a good seal. Just uh, go ahead and take the time to make room where you can pull it off straight and not have to finagle it in there. Um, mechanics who are under a time frame I understand uh, you got to get to the next car but if it's your own car just I would take the time and just go ahead and pull the stuff out of the way and it actually makes the job a lot easier okay we're down to our water pump now there are four bolts from what I see and uh, they're half inch bolts and they're offset diagonal two here and then two right below it and we still got our tube on uh, we'll have to match this when we get our new water pump got a uh, bucket underneath it. I haven't spoiled a whole lot, but I'll take uh, towels and just put them in the bucket. Just to try and keep it off the garage floor. We'll have to clean up anytime you do a water pump. It's going to be like this. And we're going to lose just what's in the block. We saved most of what was in the radiator just by holding the hoses up high. I'm going to take this bottom one out. I know it's not going to fall, but it's going to be stuck on there good. My fingers now with that crank is right on top of me. So once you get down through the water pump, there's not much to it. There's these four bolts and they're not in there very tight. This is this one. Wasn't. We're just gonna kind of break it loose. Well, just pop that off. All things go in the bucket. But there you go. And uh, I'll keep the pipe on until I get the other water pump. And you can't see it. But there's a whole lot of play in there. We're lucky we didn't get stranded somewhere and overheated. It just was starting to make a whole lot of noise. And these are the basic tools we use to get it out. Uh, we used a pair of channel locks to get the clamps off and to break the hoses loose. We used a uh, big screwdriver to pry the housings off. Uh, the housing off for the uh, thermostat. Thermostat had two bolts, uh, one longer, one shorter. Uh, three bolts to hold the power steering pump in, and you had uh, four nuts that held the uh, belt-driven fan in, and you had uh, four studs that held the uh, pulley that was on the uh, water pump uh, and all my other parts I've got stacked over here and you had uh, three bolts in the bracket itself that were 15's and we're going to have to glue this back together best we can with some Gorilla Glue and make sure you don't mix up your pulleys I've got them setting where they go and uh, you had some 9 millimeters that I just left in their brackets uh, as it goes across this hose goes to your overfill and I'll show you when we put it back together, but I just left those in there. Um, so we used uh, deep well 15 and a short 15, a 9 millimeter, 13 uh, wrench, and a half inch wrench, and a half inch socket, and a 15 deep well. And that's pretty much it. You know, it's not that big of a job. And we should be able to read on this thing. Um, 
what the temperature was. It should say on here somewhere. But I don't see it. Oh, there, it should be on the end right there. It's like a 195 degree thermostat. You can see here, uh, top holds the thermostat, bottom holds the uh, water pump. I had to get a little more of that water out of the block just so when I clean it that uh, it doesn't get on the surface of the block again. But we're going to take a little scraper and some brake cleaner and come in and just clean this front end of this engine up really good uh, and get all the grease out of the way and off of it uh, so our new parts can go on. And we've come in and scraped this up pretty good. I uh, didn't use any brake cleaner yet, but I'll get there. You can see all that crud. I'm going to blow all that out. Uh, I'll also use a paper towel kind of stick in there and keep any trash from going in there. But once I get all the major stuff blown out, uh, we'll maybe even use a little sandpaper and try and get this a little bit cleaner. These things were so freaking bonded on there uh, because it does run a little bit harder. And again, opening up space in here allows you to get uh, cleaner mating surfaces and it's, it's just going to make it easier, man. All right. As you can see, uh, I did use a little bit of sandpaper. If you do use sandpaper, use a real light grade. You don't want to change the flush mount of uh, your stuff. You don't want to affect the levelness of the metal at all. Uh, but you do have to have a really clean, grease-free surface to get a good seal. But you can see uh, that looks a lot better. I even came around the side with a wire brush and cleaned off a lot of the baked on oil and grease crap that was on it. Um, we got our parts and the tube has to come over and go on the new one so i just took a picture of my phone here I always do that um, and you'll know how it goes back cleaned our thermostat housing up real good it's ready and we've got some uh, better quality clamps uh, than what came on it uh, we got a fail safe thermostat 195 degrees uh, taking it apart first was the right thing to do before you get parts then you know what parts to get um, and of course gaskets for the thermostat and the uh, water pump. Uh, the water pump itself is a one-year warranty. It was about $24 at AutoZone, so not a real expensive job. Um, I guess the antifreeze is the most expensive thing. And it'd be nice if I had a vice, but I don't. So I'm just kind of get my knee on the edge of that and just tapping it loose to break it loose. It was harder than that, but then once you get to a certain point, and I'm using the box end on it so there's less slippage. I don't want to strip that out. And we'll use a little bit of Teflon tape when we put this back in. And they did before too. We'll try and clean these threads up a little bit too. The threads on this, was, they were a little bit rough at the end of it, but it'll be fine. When you put Teflon tape on to tighten it, we'll go this way. So we're going to run the tape around that way so the tape doesn't back up and find the end of it. Once you get the first wrap. As you put it in, the tape will start sealing immediately. Now come one more full turn. We can do that. Pretty sure it was right in there somewhere, but check the phone picture. Let's see if we can get to the like what came off of it. Whoa. Yeah, so come 
around a little more. much. We can adjust it once we get on there if we have to. A little more further back. It's tight enough where that's not going to leak though. So the adjustment's kind of built into the way the threads are made. And that's pretty freaking close there. Too much, but same thing on the gas. Longer go bolt will go through the longer hole. Put those in. Go ahead and set them in gently. And we're going to put this down. Try and get two of them started. Very carefully. Wiggle it a little bit till you get all your bolts started real good. And uh, I did do a pipe adjustment uh, just a little bit after I set it on here before I put the gasket to on and stuff. And you do, you want to kind of alternate. Bottom one's going to need a deep well.
Don't put too much on these. I'm guessing somewhere between around 20 pounds is what it felt like coming off. As long as they're torqued evenly at about 20 pounds, I think you're fine. We'll just keep working our way around. Each time you tighten one, the next gets a little bit looser. And we do the same procedure with the uh, thermostat housing. I've got the thermostat just sitting in there. The starter bolts through the gasket. Make sure we're putting it on the right way. And make sure our bolts get started first so we can line up good. Put your finger and thumbs in the back of the bolts. Line them up. Kind of get them started. Now you can go ahead. I went ahead and pushed it on because the thermostat is going to move if I don't. I'm going to hold it tight. You can get them snug on these, but not too tight, because you definitely don't want to risk stripping out anything. And that's going to be tight enough. All right, I went ahead and put all the hoses back on. This one down here, you can see now, uh, next time we need to take this hose off, I can just access it here from the front. And I put the bracket up here just to make sure that I did have clearance and uh, changed out all the factory style clamp brackets and went with these. These are 9mm usually and we already had our 9mm outs where we took the fans off. So uh, happy with that. Looks good. And I'm going to tighten up these uh, water pump bolts on the pulley before I put the uh, belt back on. I'm just uh, using vice grips and I've got a buffer here so I don't hurt the pulley. And then put them on fairly tight, but not so tight that I can't get them off in the future if I ever have to. Just be careful not to damage your pulley, but. The belt itself is not gonna have enough tension to hold this while I turn these. And there's not enough room to get the uh, channel locks in there hardly once you put the fans back in and get the belt on. Knuckle busting. These things usually do uh, go together easy or then they came apart. Uh, we uh, put our bracket back on but I just put everything finger tight so that I made sure I had room, a little wiggle room to get this in just got these bolts started so the bracket had three bolts two on the front and one on the block back there on that cross brace we'll tighten them down then we'll come through here and torque all these down and then we'll be back with that okay putting the uh, belt driven fan back in now then where I broke uh, it was already broken it would have been nice if they'd made these fan shrouds in two-piece systems I put this one little uh, bolt back on and put my fan in then I put the top half in and glue it after I put the belt on. But I'm just using the screwdriver wrench method instead of relying on the belt being tight. It's not going to be tight enough to uh, turn these bolts. But you can put the screwdriver between a bolt and the shaft of this thing and hold it while you tighten the bolts. And that seems to work pretty good. And I alternate from one side to another. Make sure I'm torquing it down evenly. So we're gonna go past and get it over here. That actually works pretty good. All right. The next thing we do is put the belt on, but I want to uh, make sure there's no slick. Uh, fingerprint oil or antifreeze on these uh, slick pulleys where the back side of the belt comes around because that belt I'm not going to replace it it's already kind of slick 
Um, so I'm going to take a little bit of a uh, brake printer again and just clean all the pulleys down to make sure that there's no uh, debris or slickness on them. All right, got her back together. Uh, the radiator was full, so I'm going to have to run it and uh, get the thermostat to open to even get water back in it. I went ahead and filled this up, and I used some of the old fluid, but I don't think I'm going to use any more of that. It did; it was discolored a little bit, but uh, it'll actually suck that in as it heats up. Uh, but it glued this back together and used Gorilla Glue, which seems to be some pretty good stuff um, because it's holding. And I tightened the belt up tighter than it was before, so that ought to be an improvement. But I can't think of anything else other than starting her up. All right, she seems all right. No leaks anywhere. A lot quieter, no noise. Thanks for watching.